Do you long for the days when your phone would last for a week on a single charge? Well, do we ever have the solution for you? Introducing the Linus Tech Tips Battery Expander. Just slap it on, strap it on, plug it in, and enjoy. Oh yeah, that's pretty ridiculous, isn't it? And yet, here we are, 11 years after the introduction of the original iPhone, and pretty much this legitimately is basically the solution being pitched both by Apple and by third parties to address their shoddy, a whole day, asterisk, as long as you don't use it too much, battery life. Has anyone considered that there might be a better way? You know, maybe we could, I, I don't know, just put a bigger battery in the phone in the first place. Well, that is exactly what Ulephone did. The Power 5 is an Android smartphone with five times the battery capacity of the latest iPhone XS. And they claim this thing can last for a week between charges. <laughs> Look at it. I might just believe them. And you know what else I'd believe? that I'm about to tell you about the Trident Z Royal Series DDR4 from G-Skill. It features a polished aluminum heat spreader that's available in both gold or silver and a crystalline light bar that radiates beautiful RGB. Check it out at the link below. Thirteen thousand milliamp hours. That's the advertised capacity of the Power 5, and in a phone that is utterly massive. Like to put that in perspective, the latest iPhone XS's battery is 2600 milliamp hours, the Pixel 3 XL weighs in slightly thicker at 3400 milliamp hours, and even the Note 9, which Samsung advertises as all day, has a mere 4,000 milliamp hour battery in it. That puts the Power 5 at five times, 3.8 and 3.25 times larger capacity than these phones respectively. That's a lot of juice. It really is basically like carrying around a regular phone and a pretty beefy battery pack, which translates to some interesting results. But let's talk a bit about the rest of the phone first. It's pretty much your standard affair budget offshore Android device with a six inch 1080p screen that manages to be unremarkable, both in terms of image quality and feel, a relatively slow eight core CPU, somewhere around the level of a one plus three and North American cellular band support that's a little bit limited. As for aesthetics, some people are probably actually gonna quite like this, but I think it suffers from kind of a dated appearance. Jake got LG G4 vibes from the back, and as for me, I'm reminded of those leather cases that people used to get for their really old brick phones. You know, like the really old ones, the ones with the little like flip out mouthpiece and the antenna that comes up. Brennan, do you, do you see that at all? Yeah, right? Yuck. Other than that, it doesn't really seem like anything special. That is until you pick the thing up. The sheer girth, and more notably, the weight of it is like nothing that I've experienced in a modern phone. Again, we need context for this. The Power 5 is exactly twice as thick as the Pixel 3 XL, and the phone weighs almost three quarters of a pound. That is 330 grams for the metric folks out there. Like it's kind of funny because on the one hand, it will be actually impossible for many people to operate one handed. And it's not even top heavy. It just kind of feels like it because there is so much weight hanging off the top of your hand. On the other hand though, it actually gives it sort of a like premium feel that you wouldn't expect from a $250 smartphone. That and if you got in a fight, like you hit someone with this in your hand. No, I'm serious. The speakers, or I should say speaker, there's just one, are what I would describe as usable, unless you listen to something decent first and realize how much you're missing. The dual front and rear cameras are actually not the worst thing ever, but they use a Sony sensor from 2015. So that should give you some idea of the era of smartphone camera quality to expect. It's a far cry from a Pixel 3, but honestly it would probably be fine for most people. That is unlike the fingerprint sensor, which only seems to work a fraction of the time, no matter how many times we tried to set it up. And even with all five fingerprint slots and software used by the same finger. 
With that said, at least when it does work, you are in for a treat. Just kidding, it's really slow. But to be honest, I think a lot of people could probably make those compromises for the added stamina that this phone affords, if that's important to them. Like, let's say you're the kind of person who regularly flies between Washington DC and Moscow for work. Even if you were to watch videos during that entire 12 or 13 hour travel time, the Eula phone wouldn't break a sweat. During our testing, it lasted for a staggering 31 and a half hours of continuous watching YouTube videos. Remember, that's with Wi-Fi active. By comparison, the Pixel 3 XL slummed it with just under 14 hours. And hey, the Power 5 even supports GLONASS, Russia's version of GPS, so you won't get lost while you're over there. Okay, but how about something a little more indicative of regular phone use? Let's say a combined workload of web browsing, photo and video editing, writing, and data manipulation. Well, PCMark's Work 2.0 benchmark hits the phone with this sort of mishmash of common workloads without any standby time in between. And again, the Eula phone impresses with 3.6 times the effective battery life of Google's latest and greatest. So with some quick napkin math here, let's say, you know, four hours of that kind of load per day, you would end up with more than nine days of battery life. Like obviously you'd still have some standby usage, but to say that a week of battery life on this thing is possible would actually be pretty safe. All right, now let's talk about gaming. Imagine for a moment playing a mobile game on your phone literally all day, going to sleep, then doing the same thing all the next day without having to plug in. That's possible. And then at the opposite end of the scale, what about going on a week long backcountry camping trip using just your phone for navigation? Like the possibilities that this thing unlocks are freaking bananas. So much so that I actually kind of wondered if the thing would even finish charging overnight, but it actually doesn't take that long. So the included wall board here is spec for their own style of quick charging with a slightly odd, although OnePlus has a similar scheme, five volt, five amp output that juices the phone from zero to 100% in a rated two and a half hours, although your mileage may vary slightly. So bottom line, yeah, we know battery life isn't a problem for everyone. You might have a place to plug in at your desk or in the car or on the plane. And honestly speaking, for how much heavier this phone is, it might actually be more convenient for folks who don't wanna get their phone arm all like jacked to just carry a battery bank in their purse or backpack or whatever. But we'll let you guys be the judge of that. In fact, we'll let you guys be the judge of what the best way forward is in general. Leave a comment. Is the convenience here worth the compromise? Should we stick to the status quo? Or should we maybe try and find a middle ground? Like I personally have wanted for a long time to see a, a 6,000 or 7,000 milliamp hour phone with li like an endurance edition from a, a tier one manufacturer like Samsung or Apple or Google. Am I ever gonna get that? Probably not. But what I will get is this sponsor message for iFixit iFixit's been helping people fix PCs, laptops, phones, and all kinds of electronics for years. And we've actually been using their tools to do just those things for, well, years as well. And you can get your fix on with iFixit's new line of Marlin screwdrivers. Each fixed blade screwdriver features an ergonomic knurled rubberized handle with a swivel top, plus a black oxide coated tip so it hangs onto tiny screws with a steel grip. The set case lid is held in place magnetically and can be used as a sorting tray, and it's manufactured in Germany and backed by iFixit's lifetime warranty. So don't hesitate. Stop giving away money having someone else repair your electronics when you can just do it yourself with a Marlin screwdriver set and the great guides over at iFixit.com. It's just $24.99, less than what you'd often pay for just one repair done by a third party. Go check it out. So thanks for watching guys. If you disliked this video, you can hit that button, but if it was awesome, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts. Oops, not like this one. Like this one. And our community forum, which you should totally join.